Alright, that's fine. You see, Bible says prove all things, all these things here, that's the thing, you know, so many contradictions, you know. You know, he has his head, he has his story, you know when he comes, they just attack. Even Thomas Carlyle, Thomas Carlyle, who was a Scottish writer, essay, teacher, and historian, during the Victorian era, after he read the Quran, this is what he said. Thomas Carlyle said, if a book comes from the heart, it will contrive to read other hearts. All art and autocrats are small amount to this. One would say, the primary... He said that Thomas Carlyle said that the Quran is a bona fide book. Non-Muslim scholars are reading the Quran with an open heart and come out with such donation. Even Napoleon Bonaparte said it. Napoleon Bonaparte was, is one of the uh, scholars, non-Muslim scholars, who said something majestic about the Quran. He said, I hope the time is not far when I should be able to unite all the wise and educated men of all the countries and establish a uniform regime based on the princi principles of the Quran which alone are true and which alone can lead men to happiness. You ask me the Quran with understanding, but we know your agenda. So let's go to more contradictions in the Bible. More. So next one is question is where was where was Jesus at the sixth hour on the day of the cruci crucifixion? Where was Jesus on the sixth hour on the day of the crucifixion? Now, according to that contradiction here is between Mark and John. If you read the Bible in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse number 32 33, here he says that he narrated that on the day of the crucifixion, at the sixth hour, Jesus was on the cross. But John disagreed. According to John, in the Gospel of John, chapter, chapter number 19, Verses number 14 to 16, here he narrated that Jesus was in Pilate's court. He was on the cross. Mark said he was on the cross. John said in Pilate's court. Wait, what is it? Contradiction upon contradiction. Next question is, is the law of Moses useful? The law of Moses, is it useful? You'll be amazed. We know that we Muslims know that you who are following the rights of Paul. Not the teachings of Jesus Christ this morning. Look at these two verses. Is the law of Moses useful? The contradiction here has been 2 Timothy and in the book of Hebrews. In the 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 16 says that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful in teaching, in refutation, and in training in righteousness. So according to the 2 Timothy, all scripture is useful. But in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 7, verse number 8, he said, a former commandment is put aside because of its uselessness and wickedness. So which one is it? Can you explain that to me? Because today, Christians are telling us that we don't follow the, we don't follow the law of Moses. We follow the New Testament. So these two contradictory tell me. One said, the old scripture is bad and gone. It's useful. And the other one said, in the book of Philippians, the former commandment is put aside because of what? It's wickedness and uselessness. And incontrovertible, incontestable, indubitable, and irrefutable contradiction. You can't defend it. Next contradiction. What did Judas do with the blood money he received for betraying Jesus? Judas got money for betraying Jesus. No, what did he do with the blood money he received for betraying Jesus? The contradiction here is between the book of Acts and the Gospel of Matthew. If you read the Bible, in the book of Acts, chapter number 1, verse number 18 says that he bought a field with it. According to Acts, Judas used the money to buy a field with it. But in the Gospel of Matthew, Chapter number 27, verse number 5 said, He threw all of it in the temple and went away. Which one is it? Indisputable. You can deny it. It's a contradiction. You can prevaricate, but you can't get around it. The Bible is a pretty contradiction. So which one is it? The Judas, according to uh, Acts, buy the field, buy the field with the money he received for betraying Jesus. Or, according to Matthew, did he threw all of it in the temple and went away. Amazing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, he's talking about contradictions with the Gospels of uh, Matthew, Mark and Luke and John. John is using Roman time 
and Roman time is different in the other Gospels. Roman time in John and Gentile time in the other Gospels. So when he says there's contradictions, if he doesn't understand that, he's going to get confused. On the issue of the Gospels, in just in the Gospel of John alone, there are 50 historical verified facts, historical facts that have been verified. The Gospel of John is a solid historical book. In the, Gos in the, in the book of Acts, the, uh, a secular scholar, a secular scholar who I'll, I'll read to you right now, a secular scholar, Colin Hermer. Colin Hermer is a secular scholar, one of the greatest scholars on ancient Greek literature. He studied the book of Acts and found, just in the first few chapters, 66 solid historical facts. So when he's saying there are contradictions between uh, Judas and the blood, I would say he needs to study it in more detail about what's going on there. Because the Gospel of Acts is always verified is historical correct. This is a secular scholar who's verified 60 odd historical facts in the book of Acts. On the issue of the law, on the issue of the law, you've got to read Romans, the book of Romans, the book of Galatians, the book of Hebrews. You can't expand the law in just two minutes. The law, Paul said, is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The Old Testament is to show us who Christ is and point us to Christ. And Christ died on that cross to save us. Now the law is also we're to obey it, but it doesn't save us. There's no contradiction, but you're going to have to read the book of Romans if you're going to get into what the law is. I, I, I want to I just we, read... We've got to digress. I want to, I want to read Surah 544 in the Quran. It says, Lord, we did reveal the Torah wherein is guidance and light. In Surah 546, and we caused Jesus and Mary to follow in their footsteps, confirming that which was revealed before him in the Torah, and we bestowed him on the gospel wherein is guidance and light, confirming that which was revealed before it in the Torah, a guidance and a domination unto those who ward off evil. Surah 546. Now here it's saying that the Torah and the, and the angel are the word of God and they've not been corrupted. And if that's the case, where is the, the Torah and the angel that the Quran says was not corrupted? Where is it? Where's it gone? If he's attacking our Bible, where's it gone? He's got to show us where that Torah is, an angel, and he's not showing us where it is. But he's saying here in his own book, that our Bible has not been corrupted. How long we got? Two minutes. Okay, he says in here, it's the Judas, he says, that's easy, Matthew 27, 3, 8 says, when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is this to us, they replied, that's your responsibility. So that Judas threw the money into the temple and left, then he went away and hanged himself. And then Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I thought you were supposed to be a moderator. The, 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 priest, the priest then used the money to buy a field as a foreigner cemetery, which became known as the you're field delaying, of blood. You're, you're yeah. the moderator, you're delaying us. No one here, let me let's, let Surah let three, me Surah 3 what verse time, 3. What time is it? Surah 3 verse 3. You're not fair. One, and one, one minute. No, no, Surah 3 3 no, says, It is he who sent down thee step by step the truth, the book, confirming that which went before it. And he sent down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind. And he sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. Surah 3 3. So in the Quran, in the Quran, in the Quran, it's confirming that the Bible has not been changed. Surah 1095. And be not thou those deny the revelation of Allah, for then wert thou the loser, Surah 1095. Now if he believes in the power of God, and God gave the Torah, and God gave the Injil, how can God be powerful if his word can be corrupted? So he's attacking the very power of God to say that the Bible can be corrupted. See this guy here. I think he hasn't read the Bible, he hasn't even read the Quran for 20. Yeah, we believe in Jesus Christ based on him as the Messiah sent to what? To the children of Israel. Jesus himself said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, he was sent to you. Do you know that 
Jesus never, this book, you are, you are attacking Islam and the Quran, this book was the reading, the time of Jesus, centuries later, but two, three hundred years later, this has nothing to do with Jesus. The Injil you're talking about, that Injil is not non-existent. We believe in the Wahi, the revelation was given to all the was given to us, was Moses, his born him, the Torah, Torah, but that one is even corrupted. The books have been corrupted. That's why Allah sent down the last and final revelation of Quran. Now, if you see the Quran, we should believe in this. What does three into here? God is a three in one. If you read the Quran, we are digressing here. I know God is digressing after that.